Hey guys, Hypo last here again, back with the Kanagi deck. We've just gotten paired up against a cat, so this might actually be a very quick game. Uh, the sand is fine, we've got a water spirit to hopefully face off against either a harpy or a scout that he plays. We've got two coral priestesses which are going to help out a ton, so I'm going to say yes to the sand. The second water spirit is really nice. We're going to increase our magic to start off with and pass the turn. The reason we get magic is because we'd really like to set it to magic so that we can play most of our spells if we happen to draw them. And we're going to try not to sacrifice too, too much uh, might in order to do that. So I get the sun blaze. An option would be to play a spring spirit in front of this hunter and then aim to sun blaze it next turn. But I'm actually just going to try to take control of the top row, I think. We're going to bump the magic one more turn, and after this we're going to have to start bumping our might. Uh, next turn, we're looking at probably playing another spring spirit. Goblin Mentor comes down in front of the spirit. Okay, so never mind. I guess I'm going to be sun blazing. So something about this deck is you really want to keep your hand as full as possible. So I'm going to just draw a card first because Sunblaze only costs two, and we'll just go ahead and do that and take out this mentor. Alright. Now, our opponent has had a bit of a slow start. We've been able to manage the board pretty well so far. This War Oliphant is not exactly what I was hoping to see. This guy doesn't have Enrage, right? Okay, good. So right now this War Chanter isn't even going to do anything. Um... This is kind of an awkward spot for the shark guard, but I guess I can play him beside the war chanter. Cat doesn't really have any posi positional spells that she plays. She mostly just plays insect swarm, so I should be safe here. And I'm also going to bump the knight and play this priestess opposing the hunter. Let's just move the oliphant out of the way for now and attack. My plan for next turn is to play another priestess, moving this guy up after attacking it, and hopefully be able to just kill off the hunter. So, my hand, I have an Ice Spikes. This is really nice. Uh, NIL is going to come down at some point. We've got more movement. We've got the one Azame, so we're pretty set up for the next few turns. Ooh, a Cyclops Brawler. Man, this is getting slightly more difficult. Uh, I don't actually have many things I can do right now, unfortunately. Um, so the Kabuki Sentry is almost definitely coming down. I guess we're going to have to Ice Spikes the front row just so that the Cyclops Brawler doesn't get too good of value. That's a bit of a shame though. Alright, so we need to increase our magic. We're going to play the Ice Spikes right here and pretty tricky. We still can't really attack this, but I think I will anyways. Uh, he's going to be able to attack me back. Uh, I am, however, going to play Spring Spirit somewhere. Let's play the Spring Spirit right here and attack the Hunter. That way we can kill it off next turn with the Spring Spirit. We're just going to kill that War Chanter off. Alright, so pretty tough. Hopefully we can get up to 6 and play this NIL. And on our way up to 6, we do have some fantastic things to play down. He does kill off the Priestess, as I was expecting. However, the Spring Spirit should be able to come through and kill this. Black Skull Crusher. Okay, so he's playing the larger version of Cat. Uh, he isn't the all-out aggressive version, which I actually lost to earlier today. Not with this deck, while I was uh, trying to make a different video. <laughs> and it wasn't a very interesting game. only took about 4 turns, so I'm glad that I'm putting up a better fight this time. Though, I guess we'll see. I really want to kill off this brawler, so I think I'm going to play a priestess back here. I think? No. I should really play the priestess down here. I'm also planning on playing a kabuki sentry this turn. We're going to move this brawler into the way and kill it off. Hmm. I guess we're just going to play the sentry back here. We're going to try to kill off that hunter next turn. And we'll play another shark guard up at the top. Yes, we still need to bump our might. So glad for that reminder. I would forget that all the time. We're not attacking here because we don't want him to be able to kill us just for actual free. We want him to have to commit this entire row into killing the water spirit. 
really? A putrid dragon's breath. That is a card you don't typically see in cat. That's pretty interesting. So he's likely just going to kill off this spring spirit. My top row is almost going to be completely dead. The coral priestess will su survive that. And now I'm going to be able to kill off his hunter. This oliphant is a huge pain though. Hmm. Yeah, so I think I'm going to kill off the hunter. That's happening for sure. Uh, I think I also want to kill off this Black Skull Centaur. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to increase my might. We're going to play a Tidemaster down here. Hopefully be able to kill off the Oliphant next turn. And I did that wrong. I didn't even attack first. Oops, that's still coming up here. We're going to attack it. We're all attack it again and play this back here. Alright, well that was awkward. That was a pretty big mistake on my side. I meant to attack that with the shark guard first and then move it up and then kill it. But that clearly didn't happen. But my coral priestess is dead next turn anyways. So the sh centaur isn't getting too great a value off of it. Unfortunately this blood frenzied wyvern is pretty good value. If you're talking about value, we'll take a look at that. And he's got a dreamwalker. So hopefully I can draw some removal. Uh, I'm not really even sure what I could draw here. I guess I just need to get Anael down. Though he does put a centaur here, which is a little bit questionable. Ah, a lotus guard. That's probably pretty good. So I will be able to kill off the centaur. I'm going to be attacking the war oliphant. Not sure what else I'm going to be doing this turn, though. Uh, I could move the wyvern out of the way and actually kill the Dreamwalker, and I might want to actually do that. If I'm doing that, then I need to draw a card this turn. I think I will do that. A time of Need is very good. This is going to let me grab my Raya next turn, and that might actually swing the game back in my favor. Anyways, we're going to move this Wyvern out of the way. We are going to kill the Dreamwalker. We're going to kill the Centaur, and we're going to poke the Oliphant. Uh, might as well double Rise of the Nethermancer him. Not sure if he's playing any graveyard interaction, but it's always best to just get some of those cards out of the deck. He might be playing a phoenix or something. Alright, so I'm not 100% sold on this game. He is going to be using this crusher to kill off the sentry, most likely. Oh, she knows she as well. Man, this is brutal. The beats don't stop. Alright, we have another war chanter. Yep, that wyvern gets huge. We aren't even going to be able to kill it. And the Oliphant, what's happening with it? I don't think it should attack. Yeah, I think he correctly held that back. Alright, what can we do this turn? I mean, we're going to be attacking this for sure. You know, she is so powerful. It's terrifying. Uh, we're definitely killing the Oliphant. Uh, we need to increase our fortune. We are going to time of need and grab our Raya. We'll put her down right here and... I think we want to just stop the Shinoshi from attacking for this turn, because that is just way too powerful. We'll kill off the Chanter, and poke the Wyvern. And let's make you untargetable, because we don't want you to necessarily just die to a spell, because that would be really bad. An insect Swarm here would basically just kill me. Of course, making this untargetable doesn't actually stop that, so I'm still probably dead to an insect Swarm. Hopefully he doesn't have it, though. We'll see. Campfire. Uh, it's just drawing more chain lightning. Yikes. So that's probably coming down right here. Oh, it can't. It would kill his own thing, right? Okay, yeah. I was correct. He comes down, he kills the shark guard. He ends up killing the Raya, unfortunately. It wasn't quite the way that I wanted that to happen. And this uh, Tide Master is going to be dying, it looks like. So now that she knows she is unleashed, hmm, what am I going to do about that? Oh, he plays another guy, though. So I can actually attack this. I can play a Lotus Empire Guard. Unfortunately, I don't know. I could play the Lotus Empire Guard and play the Wanazami beside it, and that would actually be enough that the Preemptive Strike would stop all of this. Right? Hmm. I could draw a Geyser. It's not enough. I guess I could kill the Shinoshi if I play the Wanazami in front of it. So I can play Geyser, I can play Sayama Champion here, 
and then the one is on me in front of this and kill off the Shinoshi and then it's just the Black Skull Crusher that I need to worry about. The Black Skull Crusher, by the way, won't be taking damage from the Geyser. It does have enemy spell ward, but we will do this anyways. We'll play down these two cards and we need one more might and that does unlock our Lotus Guard and our Anayel. So hopefully Anayel can come down on whichever row he starts putting pressure on. I have the Lotus Guard in reserve. We can't play both of them in the same turn, unfortunately, but he does make a bit of a mistake. He actually pumps my Sayama Champion before attacking, so that does kill his Black Skull Crusher. Not going to complain about that, and he throws it in. The two scouts were not going to be enough, so I managed to fend off the Cat Onslaught. Giant Cat is very hard to beat, but this deck I think does a better job than most. It's kind of got the board control to make the best of it. So I'll see you guys back for the next game.